of God. So as he wrote this book, he wasn't writing it to for no other purpose other than for the reader to become a, a believer. Many of the well-known theologists uh, in history would always say that if you had just the book of John, you can go evangelize an entire nation just with the book of John because of the purpose of this book. And as we, I would encourage you, if you have not read or studied the book in its entirety, I would encourage you to spend some time in the book of John from the beginning to end and see the writing and what John testified through the spirit about the life of Jesus Christ. When we look at the book of John, we know we have three synoptic gospels. We have four gospels. Three of the gospels are synoptic. When we talk about synoptic, we, we talk about summary, books that summarize the life of Jesus and the time of Jesus on this earth. But John's book is not a synoptic book. It's not a synoptic because he didn't write merely just to summarize all the things that Jesus did while he was here. Again, he wrote for one purpose, so that the reader may believe that Jesus is the Christ. So one of the words that you will see quite often in John's writing is the word believe, believe, believe. And that is for a purpose, because why? Again, he wants us to believe, because believing in Christ is salvation. Believing in Christ is salvation. All right. So we will look in our chapter. All right. And again, our, our lesson title this week is Never Too Far Away. Never Too Far Away. All right. One thing that we can easily associate ourselves with is cell phones. All right. And, and even with your cell phone, if you have headphones, you had it hooked up to any kind of Bluetooth situation, then you know that when you leave, you walk too far away from your cell phone, that the person that you have on, on your headphones, you can't hear them anymore. They can't hear you anymore. Why is that? Because you are too far away from them. You have to be close enough for it to work. The one thing that we can have assurance in is that we are never, no matter where we are on this earth, we are never too far away from the Lord. Jesus wrote, I mean, I'm sorry, David wrote in the book of Psalms, no matter where he goes, where he is, the Lord can find him. He will find him. We are never too far from the Lord. I think about Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of a well, deep in the ocean. And he said a prayer. And the Lord heard his prayer. So the one thing we must always know for surety, for a fact, is that we are always, we're never too far away from the Lord, so we can always be in his presence. And in God's presence, we have life. We have all his promises. We have all that we need because we, we understand that we are in his presence. Never too far away. All right, now, our unit title is the word. The ancient, I'm sorry, the agent of creation. The word, the agent of creation. Now, when we talk about the word, the word can be two things. Mm -hmm. The word can be the actual uh, letters put together to make a word. And the word also we learn in the book of John is Jesus Christ. Right. All right. So Jesus is the word. The word made flesh. And where it dwelt among us. So 
when we talk about the word, we're talking about God in the flesh. And we think about God. God is the creator of all things. He is the cre creator of all things. Nothing was made that was made that wasn't created by him. Uh, we, we, we look at how John created, how John described God. In the beginning was the what? Word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So when we think about the word, we, and we're talking about God, we're talking about, I'm sorry, Jesus. And Jesus was with God, and they created all things. Now, they created, if we go back in the book of Genesis, we see how things were created. They were created by God spoke things into existence. He said, let there be. And when he said, let there be, it came into existence. And John tells us that the word was with God. Jesus was with God. So just as much as God is a creator, Jesus is a creator, the son. So Jesus' word also gives life. What he says goes. What he says happens. And see, what we have to understand is when, when God says something, it is. When Jesus says something, it is. See, that's the very foundation that John wants us to understand. It is. He is the word. So when Jesus speaks, it shall come to pass. So in the big picture of things, that should make our brain start running and racing a little bit because we, we start thinking about all the promises that we have in the Bible from God and from Jesus. And we know that his word creates, whatever his word is, says it does. So when we hear uh, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, then our hearts should feel good about it to know that no matter what situation that we are in in life, we know that it's going to work to our good. When we hear, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That should make us feel good about the things that we have to face, many, many circumstances in our life that we don't know how we're going to make it or how it's going to come to pass, we should feel good because God has promised us in his word that he can do all things. We can do all things through Christ. See, when we are sick and we don't, the doctor don't know, can't give us no assurance that he knows exactly how to heal us or can't give us 100% uh, uh, promise that he can heal us, then we have to go to God's word. See, Jesus gave the disciples, he told the disciples, he would give you, he, he possessed, he gave us his power. He said that we can heal the sick. We can cast out de devils and heal the sick in his name. See, so when we pray to God, when we pray to Jesus, we know that he is a healer. So again, we have to live our lives on the promises that God has given us. So hearing and studying our Sunday school lessons, this unit and studying God's word, studying the book of John, we should be strengthened because we understand that Jesus is the word. He is God, he is the creator. And what he says he's gonna do. See, we, but what makes it not come to pass in our life is because we don't believe. Just because we can't see how God going to do it, we can't believe it. But we as Christians and as believers should just trust the Lord that he's going to bring it to pass and he will. So we see in our message today, I start by reading our text. It, our text is John, fourth chapter, verses 46 through 54. John, 
fourth chapter, verses 46 through 54. And as, we, as I read the scripture, I want us to think of these questions. Consider these questions. And these are questions we want to try to answer as we read this scripture and study it. What kind of faith does Jesus want believers to have? What kind of faith does Jesus want believers to have? Second question, what did Jesus tell the nobleman to do in this week's lesson? What did Jesus tell the nobleman to do in this week's lesson? And the third thing, what can we learn about faith from this week's lesson? So we want to consider those questions as we read our scripture and study our lesson. Our scripture comes from the fourth chapter, verses 46 through 54. Fourth chapter, verses 46 through 54. And it reads, so Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. And the man believed the word. I, I read it again. And the man believed the word <laughs> that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, thy son liveth, thy son liveth. Then required he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth. And himself believed and his whole house. This is again, the second miracle that Jesus did when he came, when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So we see here a miracle that Jesus did. And we see an act of faith by a nobleman. And his act of faith was that he believed. Remember, John wrote this book. There's only seven miracles in this book. And he wrote these several miracles so that we may believe. What? That Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. So as our story, as we get into our message today, we got to kind of understand the backdrop. We understand that our setting is in Galilee, in Cana of Galilee. Now, Cana is at the northwest part of the Sea of Galilee. It's right above Capernaum. Now, one of the most famous, uh, the, mo the most... <clears throat> Cana is most noted for the miracles that the miracle that Jesus did in Cana at the wedding. The first miracle that John uh, speaks that of Jesus doing, his beginning of his miracle in the book of John, is at the wedding in Cana. And it's where Jesus turned water to wine. You know the story as they were at the wedding. They were celebrating at the wedding. Mary was there. Jesus was there. And they ran out of wine. And they told Mary. And Mary went and told Jesus that they had ran out of wine. And Jesus said, what is that to me? It's not my time. <laughs> but Jesus, in, uh, in and of himself, in his sovereignty, he performed a miracle. He turned the water to wine. You know, he told the servants to go fill up the pitchers with water and they did. And when they pulled the water, the water from the, they pulled from the, uh, the water pitchers, it was wine came out. So it was many things in that miracle that Jesus uh, <clears throat> revealed to those who were at the wedding and revealed to us as readers of the story. First of all, that the life that we used to live it was pretty good. It was, it was okay. It was all right. It wasn't going to lead to nothing but death. 
We thought we were living a good life. We thought it was the best. But see, once we taste the wine of the spirit, the wine that Jesus gives us, which is the spirit, see, we will testify like those that testify at the wedding. And they said, what did they testify when they drank the wine that Jesus did? This is the best thing. <laughs> Usually they, they put out the, the good wine first, but you have say what? The best will last. And see, that is what Jesus offers us when we come to Christ and we believe in him and we are living in the spirit. Then now we, we used to have a life that we thought was good, but once we live the life in the spirit, then we realize this is the best thing that ever happened to us. See, again, Jesus wants us to believe that he is the son of God. So as he performed, after he performed this miracle in Cana, he went up to Judea. He went up into Jerusalem and he went to the Passover. And the scripture tells us that he did many miracles in uh, Judea, in Jerusalem. And because of all the miracles that he did, many people believe. If you look at John second chapter, verses 23, it says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast days, many believed in his name. Many believed in his name. Why what did they believe him? Because he was preaching so well, because he just said who he was? No, this is why they believe. John goes on to write, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. So when Jesus went into Jerusalem, obviously he was performing miracles. He probably was healing the sick. He was giving sight to the blind. He was just healing uh, 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 unstopping deaf ears. He was just healing as he go. And see, even in the book of John, John said he testified that in my book, he only gave seven signs, but Jesus did many other signs, truly did Jesus. But these are written that he put in his book so, so that ye might believe. He says, if, if, I, if I can tell you all the, the miracles that Jesus did, he said all the books in the world could contain all the miracles that Jesus did when he was here on this earth and he, that he's still doing. And then you have to wonder and, and think about that because it's really true if you just put it in a practical sense. Just think of each and every person that was saved by hearing the word of Jesus Christ. Their life was changed by hearing the word of Jesus Christ. They became a sinner to a saint. The sins that they could not stop committing, they stopped committing now because they ran into Jesus Christ and he healed them of their sin and their sickness and all the things that he has done for us in our life, how he made a way out of no way. See, we put those things in a book. See, all the books in the world can contain all the things that Jesus did. But these that John has put in his book, he said, these are written so that ye may believe. So we see again in John, the second chapter, that John uses the word many what? Believed. Believed in his name when they saw the miracle, which he did. So Jesus became very well known, very popular. So you got to understand during the Passover, everybody from all around Judea, all around Israel, all around the, the country, all around, I mean, Jews from everywhere came into the Passover to celebrate the Passover. And there was people from everywhere. And they saw all the things that Jesus did and perform all the things that Jesus did. And they were amazed and they believed. So they went back to all over their, the nation that they come from speaking and talking about Jesus. So Jesus became very well known at this time. But again, they were believing. Why? Because of the miracles that he performed. And see, Jesus don't want us to believe simply uh, in the things that he can do. See, Jesus wants us to believe in who he is. See, he is the Christ. He is the son of God. See, just believing in his miracles won't save us. There's many people can do magic. I mean, I don't know if don't people be doing on TV is magic or is something on TV. I, I have the slightest idea. I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Jesus, his salvation for our lives is not just in the miracle working power that he has. It's in the revelation that he is the son of God. He is the son of God. He is 
the Messiah. He is the Christ. And in knowing who he is, see, then we can fully understand and know what he can do and what his purpose for, for coming. It's not just to perform miracles. All right, so, and this is what this message kind of tells us. As we go into, as Jesus left Jerusalem, most Jews would go uh, around an area called Samaria because they didn't like to mingle among the Samaritans. The Samaritans were considered to be unclean. And most Jewish, especially rabbis, especially the priests, would not go through Samaria. But Jesus said that I must go through Samaria. Instead of walking around like all most Jewish people would do, he went through Samaria to get to Galilee. So in going through Samaria, he ran into the famous woman in the Bible that we don't even know her name. He ran into the Samaritan woman at the well. And at the well, Jesus asked her for some water. <laughs> and that question led to her salvation. She realized when Jesus told her everything about herself, and he explained to her that he has this living water, then she had a revelation that this is the Christ, the Son of God. This is who the Jewish nation, the, the people who were Jewish, have been looking for since the fall. This is the man. This is the Christ. This is the son of God. This is the seed of Abraham. This is the seed of David. This is the king, as Matthew would say. So she went back and told everyone in her hometown and her city in Samaria. And everyone came out because of her testimony. And everyone was saved. They knew who what they, everyone believed is what John said. Everyone believed and were saved because of her testimony and them meeting Jesus Christ. So we see Jesus was led into Samaria to, to uh, destroy the myths or the, or that was going on at that time that we don't miss with the Samaritans. See, Jesus didn't think that way. Jesus came to save everybody, no matter who it was. And leaving Samaria, he came back to Canaan. He's back in Galilee, in particular, Canaan. Now, here's where our story begins. So Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee, where he made water to wine. And there was a certain nobleman. Now, we talk about a certain nobleman. Didn't give the name, but did tell us that he was a nobleman meaning that he worked in, he was in the uh, he worked up under the king in some form of capacity. And he's probably uh, a Jewish person. And there was a certain no nobleman, all right, whose son was sick at Capernaum. So he needed a miracle because his son was sick. But see, how many of you know that Miracles are not needed unless there is a problem. <laughs> so when we are expecting miracles, then we must understand that you have what? A problem. See, so this man needed a miracle. So he heard, he had to have heard about what this man was doing that this man did at Passover. Well, I heard of a man that at Passover that was healing the sick. That was healing the blind. That he did many miracles. Well, maybe this man, this might be the man that can save my son because he can do miracles. He can heal the sick. So what I want to do is, I think I want to go and try to find this man to help my son. So it says in verse 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea, 
into Galilee. He went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. So we see two things about this man that we should um, uh, uh, <clears throat> understand about him. First, he had a great love for his son, that he would leave Capernaum and go to Cana, which is about a 20-mile walk. He could, as a nobleman, he could have easily sent his servants. But he went himself. And then we see that he believed in the miracle working power of Jesus. He knew where to go to, 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 to find uh, a miracle. He knew to go to Jesus. So there's two things that we see in this man that's admirable. But we have to understand the whole context of these, these verses. First, as a nobleman, he has the authority. He has the authority. He could have ordered Jesus. Say, look, you are being ordered by uh, Sergeant such and such to come to Capernaum upon the wishes of this nobleman Johnson or something. I'm just giving, him the, forgive me for just giving him any kind of name. And Jesus, and he requires soldiers to escort Jesus to his house. But what you got to understand is Jesus is the number one authority. See, when we come to God, God is in authority, not ourselves. See, our titles don't mean nothing to God. Our titles don't get God, don't get God's attention. See, because we the deacon, because we the minister, because we the head of the usher board, because we are whatever. Because we the president of the United States, that don't move God. <laughs> no, it's you understanding who he is and who you are in relation to him. See, he went to him as a servant, humbly, humbly. It said he went unto him and besought him. Another word for besought is beg him. See, that, he's not going with authority. If he wanted authority, he said, look, I need, he would have commanded him. But he went and begged him, which gives Jesus the power or the authority. Because he has the right to agree or disagree. See, so when we go to our Lord and Savior, when we make our request, we go before the Lord in prayer and petition, then we need to go humbly. Bow down on humble knees. And we must always remember God don't owe us what? Yeah. <laughs> we owe him everything. Everything. We owe him our life. That's why we live for him. But see, the one thing we can know about God is God will give us anything. See, he loves us enough because he gave us everything. What did he give us? He gave us his life. He gave us his life. So we see the man beseeching him that he would come down and heal his son. Why? Before he was at the point of death. He was at the point of death. Now, as a parent, you know the the you can imagine the desperation you will have. You see your child dying and there's nothing you can do about it. You can imagine the pain and, and the heartache and the suffering you were going to just to see your, your child dying. That's the desperation that he had as he came to Jesus. He walked. Well, walked, walked camel out. He made his way to Canaan himself. He got down all his sycamore tree. <laughs> he came down to Jesus. All right. So how did this go? We look at verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Now, wait a minute. He said, then said Jesus unto him, except ye see, ye means, ye is plural. 
So like, we, we think well, we just been talking about the nobleman. Why is he saying ye? So it was a crowd that was following Jesus. Why were they following Jesus? They weren't following Jesus because they knew him. They were following Jesus because of the miracles that he had performed. They were following Jesus because of the entertainment, the wow, the shop factor. We're going to kind of follow him around because everywhere he go, he do some, some exciting stuff. So we just going to kind of follow him around. And if you imagine that happened today, it was probably vendors around Jesus. It was probably people making money all around him. Every time he went in, they probably had somebody selling t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> somebody selling flowers. You, you know, flyers. I mean, it's society. I mean, they were, it was different things, but they were following him for what the things that Jesus could do. And see, this was the crowd around not really knowing who Jesus really is. All they knew was he can do miracles. You know what I'm saying? We're going to follow these miracles and see how this thing work out. So they were following Jesus. And Jesus took this time now, not so much to speak to the the nobleman, but also more in particular to speak to the people around Jesus, the ones that was following him for the miracles. Then now we can understand why Jesus said, except ye see signs and wonder, ye will not believe. Believe what? What does John want us to believe? That Jesus what? Is the Christ, the son of God. See, that's what Jesus wants them to believe, not just in his miracles, but, then, but he wants him to believe in who he is. See? Believe in who he is. So the nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down here. I mean, at once. My child, if, if you don't come at once, my child is going to die. See, the nobleman ain't really studying all of that. He just needs Jesus to, to, to do this for him. But notice what he says, and this is what Jesus is going to reveal, another revelation of who he is. He says, the nobleman said to him, sir, come down here at once to my child. I mean, he wants Jesus to go to his home and heal his child. See, what he's saying is, he knows that you can work miracles, but the way you work miracles, you have to be there to work the miracles. So we need you to come physically, walk to my house and perform your miracle. See, and, and this is something for us to, 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 it's a revelation for us as well, how Jesus responds. Said, the noble man said unto him, sir, come down at once or my child will die. Jesus saith unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. All right, now, the, everything, now everything has just changed. For the true believer, for the ones who don't believe, it just went all over their head. They just like, well, Jesus just told that man something. They, they, they still thinking that Jesus, they following the man in his presence. But what Jesus just did was he gave a command. Not I take that back. He did not give a command. He gave a promise. He says, thy son liveth. That's a promise from God. See, as in the introduction of John, it said Jesus is the word. The word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And we know that in the book of Genesis, he spoke the word the world into existence. Let there be. Let there be. Everything he said, let there be, poof, it happened. So if Jesus was with God and nothing was created that was created except by him, so when Jesus says something, it is. So when he said, thy son liveth, that means that it is. So the promise, that's a promise for God. And God gives, and see, that should just make us be jumping and shouting for the rest of our lives because we know that when, when Jesus says it, it is. It's going to come to pass. See, his promises are true. 
And we, he don't have to be standing in our face to, to know that it's true. We have what? We have the W-O-R-D. We have his what? Word. See, we have his word. When we have his promises, we have his word. But what we have to do is we have to look at how the nobleman responded to the promise of God. Jesus says to him, go thy way, thy son live it. And look what the man said. And the man believed. <laughs> and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. How do we know that he believed? He went his way. He left. He left. Go that way. See, what we must be sure to take away from this message is when we have God's promise, believe. Now, if you believe it, then you got to live your life according to what you believe. See, he believed it, and guess what? He started living his life according to what he believed. He left. He believed in the word that God gave him. He believed in his promise, and he lived his life according to that promise. Now, how can that, how can we apply that to our life? When God, when you're sick and you get the revelation that God set you here. So no matter what the circumstances are in your life, no matter what the doctor is saying, you're going to live your life on the promise of God that you what? You heal. So you're going to leave that doctor office not crying. You're going to leave that doctor office with your head up, feeling confident and trusting God's word. You're going to go on and live your life. If God promises you that he, you, he, you're you going to be this in life, then you are should walk away from, get off your knees and start living your life and, and what you believe God for to be. You start studying the, for the bar exam. You start uh, doing your best in school because you know the law is going to make a way. Somehow I'm going to be this doctor, lawyer, whatever it is that God has called you to be. See, you live your life according to what you believe. Because God calls things as though, as they are, as though they're, even though they are not. Again, I gave the example of Abraham. Father, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Father of the nation. Abraham had no children at that time. He came to Samuel's house and poured oil on David's head and said he was going to be king and he sent him back out well to the pasture. <laughs> See, but what he says is going to come to pass. See, it's going to come to pass, Moses, meaning drawn out. Drawn out. He went, lived in Pharaoh's house, then he went, murdered a man, then went to, uh, to, to Midian, lived on the other side of the desert for 40 years, and then Jesus called him out to be a leader. To lead his people out of bondage. See, when Jesus even though it doesn't look like what he's calling, when he tells us that this is going to be, then we need to start living our life like what he told us is going to be. That's faith. See, that's faith. And, and without faith, it is in what? Impossible to please God. So when that man got up and went his way, how pleased was God? How pleased was Jesus? Because he knew that this man believed and, and lived in faith. So surely his promise was going to come to pass. And see, that is for us. See, if you want something to walk away from, then that's what you need to walk away. I, I, to leave this Sunday school lesson, well, you need to leave it with that. Take God at his word. Take God at his word. See, because whatever he says is going to come to pass. The word, his word heals. So, and the man believed the word, my Lord. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. He believed and obeyed. See, 
if you believe that when you are saved that uh, you, you are a new creature, old things have passed away, and you begin to walk differently. When you leave this church, and then you begin to walk like, I know I'm not a drug user no more. I know I'm not this particular kind of sinner no more. I know he has delivered me from that, and he will. And you live, I'm just not going to do it for this hour. I'm going to give myself another hour. God has given me strength to overcome whatever it is that you're trying to overcome. He will do it. See, that's how crackheads become uh, saved from their addiction. Because they begin to live on the promises of God that he can break every stronghold. And they believe it and they, 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 not, and they don't do it on their power. They're doing it in his power and on his strength. And then you make a day. Then you make another day. Then you make another day. You see, for you long, you don't go on a year, two years. Not by your power, but by his power, trusting his word and what he says about you. See, let me give you what, what, what God says about you because you believe in him, what Jesus says about you, that you are a saint, that you are saved. That's what he says about you. So the sins that we all committed before this time in the past are gone away. So now you can live your life fresh, understanding that you can be whatever it is you want to be. You can. See, many people don't think they, they can be something because of what they may have did in their past. I can't be a politician because I did drugs or sold drugs or broke a crime or something in my life. Yeah, um, the people in the earth might not, they, they may or may not vote for you, but guess what? God has forgiven you. You are not that in the, in, the, in the sight of God. So you, what shows your faith is that you live your life without with, with that thought, with, with things you did, gone. You live your life as if you never did it before. Because in God's eyes, you never have. See, when, and once you believe that, you God sees you as what? Righteous. That's faith. See, we walk by what? Faith, not by what? Sight. So when you get saved, the day you get saved or delivered, God reveals to you that you're not, he calls you what he said you are in his sight. Then even though you still might be wearing them clothes, or what you was as a crackhead or whatever you was doing, just that, using that as an example, you still might be wearing them clothes, but you're not that person anymore. You think about when he healed the, the beggar. He said he got up and threw his what? Cloak away. <laughs> he's not that anymore he, he, he's saved he is this person what the Lord called him to be and each and every one of us he's calling some of us to be on the earth board he's calling some of us to work in the Sunday school class he's calling some of us to work in missionary duty he's calling some of us to work with the uh, <clears throat> with the, the giving on, on Thursdays or he's calling us he's calling each and every one of us to do something We, some of us are not accepting it because we think, well, surely he ain't asked me to help with nobody because I just went to the club last night. I just, my life ain't, ain't good enough to help nobody. That's not true. See, you're not believing what God is calling you. If you believe what he called you and start walking in that direction, all the things that you got you trapped and not feeling rightly or whatever, he's going to remove those things out of your life. Soon you start walking down that road. That's faith. And this is what the, the, the noble man did. He went, and when he went his way, that's what he did. I mean, he loved Jesus believing. It says, I, I can read a thousand times and the man believed. What, that's the best thing that you and I can do in our life is believe. Believe the promises. You are healed. You are forgiven. 
You are righteous. You are saved. You are more than a comfort in Christ. I can do all things. All things work to the good of, of those who love the Lord. So when you're going through these situations, financial situations, sickness, whatever things that come upon us, guess what? If we stay faithful and continue to live in what God has promised us, it's going to work to the good. When it's all said and done, <laughs> that, what, that's, that tough circumstance in our life is going to be for the good of what God has planned and purpose for our life. Moses felt that he was being, he was in isolation for 40 years because he killed that man. He thought he couldn't be used anymore by God. His purpose in God was gone. And he was uh, isolated 40 years on the other side of the devil. But God was using that for his good because God was just preparing him for what he really, what his, really his purpose in life. He learned how to live and keep, and, and, and keep others alive in the desert. Why? Because that's what God was calling him to do. 40 years after that, Jesus called him not to, to keep shepherds in the moat, sheep in the desert, but now you're going to keep my people alive in the desert for 40 years. All things work to the good of those who love the Lord. So live your life according to what God has called you. Walk in the ways that he tell you go. Believe in his promises. Believe in his word. That is the message, the word. Go thy way, thy son liveth. The man and the man believed <laughs> the word that Jesus had spoken to him and he went his way. Verse 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him saying, thy son liveth. So as he was going back to his, his, his home, he got the word that his son lives. Wow, I know he had to be thoroughly happy. I, I know he just had to be overjoyed. All right? But it goes on to tell us more, though. This is important. It says, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. I mean, when he began to get better. So he probably said, well, wait a minute. What time did he get better? He started saying, man, I'm finna see... I think the Jesus thing, you know, let me see. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said to him, yesterday. Wait a minute, yesterday? So this is a whole day later. So what that tell us that the man didn't even go straight home. That's trust. See, it wasn't no reason for him to rush back home. Because what? It, it was no more urgency. See, he rushed down there to get to Jesus. Because his son was dying. I need you to say, remember he told him, you don't come at once. My son would die. Okay. So now he got the word. He got the word that that son living. Well, I'm sorry. Jesus said that, well, I'm saying he got the word. He got the word from Jesus that that son living. That son living. And notice what the people said to him when they testified about his son. And he was not going down. His servants met him. And told him what? Saying that son what? Live it. John even used the same word so that ye may believe that son live it. What Jesus said, that son live it. You people come testifying to you, that son live it. The same thing that Jesus had told you about. And then when he told him about the time, he said yesterday. So the man left Jesus with complete confirmation that the Lord had was did what he said he was going to do. That it has come to pass. So he went somewhere and rested or whatever, took his time getting back home. As he got back home yesterday, when it was yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left and he realized that was about the same time that he was talking to Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. About the same time. So look what it says. So the father knew. So the father knew that it was the same hour in the which Jesus said to him, thy son liveth. Glory, hallelujah. And look what the next word says, and himself believe. Glory, hallelujah. See, believing, 
Believing. Believing is faith. But true believing is living your life according to what you say you believe. That's faith, I should say. That's faith. And his whole house believed. Glory, hallelujah. See, when God truly changes our life, when we are truly changed, we have a revelation in our life. We, we, we are born again. We walk and live in the spirit and the salvation that God has given us. It shines like a light. And the people that's closest to you notice it more than anything. That boy there that used to be doing, it could be a boy that could stay in trouble, a girl that stayed in the street, whatever, doing whatever not correct. And they come back to the house and everything, the thing that they did and they know they, they love and couldn't stop doing or whatever, they come at, they're totally different. They don't do that no more. They're living, they're doing good. Everything about them has changed. They're going to want to know what in the world that you get yourself into. And then guess what? They're going to believe. They're going to believe whatever it is, they're going to go get, go to it. And many times it saves the entire house. It saves the entire house. See, even friends. See, many times a, 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 a young man or a young woman gets saved and their life gets changed. And all the friends around be like, whoa, such and such a different. Such and such a different. And see, with friendships, they may persecute you for a while. Well, yeah, she thinks she's too good. He thinks she's too good, blah, 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 blah. But see, as time go on, they start to have problems. They start to realize the life that they live in ain't quite adding enough to be right. Like, and they see you walking with the joy and the light in you. And they start saying, they start thinking, look, I might need to go <laughs> get some of what they got. And they start asking you questions. Now, what church did you go to? Or what they said? Now, how it went? Because they realize what's in you is real. And we see this in the life of the nobleman. Say his whole house was saved. And see, we think about other stories in the Bible. See, you think about other, other stories in the Bible. You think about the centurion. When Paul and Silas prayed and prayed unto God. And said that the prisoners heard him, and then they, they were loosened. All their chains were loosened. They were free. And then the guard came and saw them free. <laughs> and he was about to kill himself. He said, No, don't do that. We're here. We are not ran. He said, and they, they told him about Jesus and said that the man believed, How can I be saved? So he baptized, believe in the name of Christ. The baptized, believe in the name of Christ, and said, And then his whole house was saved, believed. So the whole house believed. So they, they were saved. See, the, 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 the woman at Thyatira lead into that story. Her house, when they invited him to the store, her house was saved. Testified that her, people in her house were saved. See, many times, God, could, we got to allow God to make us leaders. See, these people weren't looking to be a leader. They were just being saved and they live in their life according to their, what has happened to them. They led others into salvation. That son liveth. See, and even when we look at that, we can bring that even home even further. When we think about our children, we praying, Lord, please watch over my daughter. Lord, please watch over my son. All right, the child can get grown or even, even young. They're not living. They, they're just walking in sin and doing things that we do not want them to do. And we know it's going to lead to death. We know it's going to lead to tough times in life or rough times for them in life. But what we have to do is we have to give it to God. We have to continue to give it to God. See, one of the most astounding things about the man that I did not highlight was his but his constant saying it to God. He said it one time, then he said it again. He came petitioning God as many times he needed to petition him to get the blessing he wants from God. Now, you think about the parable that Jesus gave about the woman who was coming to the king, and she kept begging the king to do something. The king didn't care nothing about this woman, could care less about the woman. 
But the king went ahead and did it. Why? Because he got tired of her asking him to do it. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus said, now, if, if this king who cares less about this person will do something for her, how much more will your father who loves you will do what you need of him? So we must continue to carry our petitions to the Lord. He will hear our cry. And the man believed. He believed what? The word. So what we have to understand about God's power, Jesus' power, is that he does not have to be with us physically. He can just send the word. See, the, his word has power. And that blows the Bible up in our face right now. Why, does, why do I say it? Because that means when I open that Bible and God tells me that he can break every stronghold over my life, that's his word. If you believe that word and you go your way and live by that promise that God gave you, he will break every stronghold in your life. See, that's his word. His word. See? So we have to understand that this message helps you understand that that word, those promises in that Bible, you believe and you go your way living according your life, according to what you believe. And as you get down that road, as you get down that road, you will see God's power work. And you see that his word will accomplish what is said. And that brings our Sunday school lesson to a close. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we come to you. Thank you for your son. And we pray that in, by the blood of Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven. Lord, we also come today, Lord, thanking you for your spirit. And Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that your spirit dwells in us and shines in us like a light, that your spirit guides us in the way we should go, gives us the wisdom, the knowledge, the boldness, the humbleness, gives us all the fruits of the spirit so that we may live our life in your ways, dear Lord. And we also pray, Lord, for your word. Lord, manifest, reveal to us your words and your promises for each and every season in our life, Lord. And Lord, Humble our hearts, soften our hearts so that we can receive it, Lord, and believe it. And Lord, let your word be done. Let your promises be done in our life, Lord, so we can walk this world in your power and your strength and in your might, dear Lord. And above all, Lord, we walk this world in your salvation and living in the victory that you have promised us through your son and that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, as, and before we leave here today, Lord, we want to pray for those who are sick right now, Lord. You say in your word that we have the power to heal the sick and to cast out devils in your name. So right now, Lord, we are speaking in your name by the power of Christ. Let they be healed, Lord, whatever sickness that are in their body, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, that you not only heal their, their bodies, but heal their spirits so that they and we all can be made whole, dear Lord. And we pray right now, Lord, for those who have a need right now, Lord, that don't know how. It's going to come to pass, but Lord, we are trusting and believe in you, dear Lord, that you will bring it to pass, Lord. And we ask all these things, Lord. And before we go, Lord, we also like to pray over the food that we are about to receive, Lord, that it be nourishing to our bodies, that it be strengthening to our spirit, dear Lord. And Lord, we also pray for the offering that we have taken up, Lord. We ask that it be used for the uplift of your kingdom, Lord, and to bring you glory. And I ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank you each and every one for joining in on our Sunday school lessons. God will us join each other to next Sunday at the same time. Thank Amen, you. Reverend. Amen. <laughs>